All right, great fun here. Brian Kilmeade's Fox Nation show, What Made America Great? He's got new episodes exploring the places that shaped our great country. Here is Brian Kilmeade, co-host of Fox and Friends and host of The Brian Kilmeade Show, joins us now to tell about it. The Brian Kilmeade Show on radio. They yeah. don't put that in, the radio thing. Well, they, they, they don't give me any radio credit either. Really? Why is that? It's I, your show, Larry. Well, it's just it's not that. It's just they don't acknowledge radio. Anyway, yeah. that's a different... Uh, Tell us what you got cooked up. Well, I'll very tell you, uh, we have four new episodes. It was not easy shooting it in this climate, and we ended up in Florida a lot because the governor said, you can come down here. So we went to the Hemingway house, number one, to relive Ernest Hemingway, what he did for five and a half years there, what he wrote, how he was inspired. I mean, you walk into that building, and you think Ernest Hemingway's coming home uh, from deep wow. sea fishing. So it was pretty amazing to do that. Also had a chance to go to Florida and explore Little Havana. Uh, not only with Marco Rubio, with the mayor. And the mayor there, whose great grandparents came from Cuba in the 1960s. And I just thought you would enjoy this story, essentially because a bunch of, a bunch of Cubans left Cuba because Fidel Castro took over, mm -hmm. and they were, gonna kill, they were gonna kill him. But doctors and scientists and lawyers left, and they were at the upper echelon of Cuba. And they go into Miami, and they become janitors, yep. construction workers, whatever it took. They wanted to be part of America. They earned their way through. This is the most successful immigrant story since the Pilgrims. Mm. And they wanted to keep their culture, and now they end up this power structure, this power base in Florida. As you know, they crown governors and they crown presidents. And we need them, and we need their values. Absolutely. Right? So do we have some tape on this on the show? Yeah, I, you paid the rights fee. Thankfully, you yes. have a big budget, <laughs> and here it is. This is Mayor uh, Suarez. In, this, this in Technicolor. Uh, Technicolor. Let's see. Right. Yeah, I believe this will be color. What did your dad tell you about Cuba? He said it was an idyllic place uh, at the time, you know, pre-Castro, uh, that it was a very modern place. Uh, and unfortunately, it's become a time capsule, because what we know is a communism has failed everywhere it's been tried in the history of humanity. The only equality that it delivers is equal misery for all of its residents. All right, again, you can sign up now for Fox Nation to see what made America great. Plus, get exclusive access to other original content, events, and your favorite personalities on any device. Now, take that last from Mayor Suarez, why they wanted to escape from communism to freedom, right? Now, on the other hand, we are trying to destroy American history, You've commented on the archives and trying to take down the figures, the historical figures in the rotunda of the archives. I can report to you today, I don't know the outcome, but apparently the House is voting on taking down statues from the Capitol rotunda. So we're trying to end history here, okay? And I think that's a real bad idea because you've got Cubans who came here for the right values and freedom and democracy who love our history. That's why they came here. And we've got all these other people trying to destroy our history and our country. So when I first saw this story, I 100% agree with you. We never say we were perfect. We say we're great and we always aspire and we change, we get better and we make progress. And I think that's why people flood our border and uh, uh, flood our immigration system. When I first saw the story, I thought it was just some uh, Democrat coming out trying to go to the National Archives and said, get your, get, uh, straighten out your Act. I did not know it was the National Archives mm. that says we are we have a structural racism problem in our rotunda. I had to write it down because I couldn't believe it. They say because it is mostly highlighting rich white guys, right. overemphasizing them, and then we want to set up situations for triggers. So if you walk in and you're upset to see Jefferson and Madison and Washington, we want to let you know that we're going to qualify that by telling you other things that they did well along with owning slaves. And they were rich white guys because they were successful. And by the way, almost all of them lost everything and then earned it back. These rich white guys are geniuses. Mm -hmm. They set up a system and helped write a constitution, allow us to grow and improve on it, fought a war to get it better, still working off those documents. And the originals are on display there. Who are we in this generation to decide that these rich white guys are not worthy of emphasis and we should apologize for them? I don't know where this comes from. By the way, the Declaration of Independence, which is pure genius, the rock star of that age was an economist named Adam Smith, who put a book out called The Wealth of Nations, published earlier in 1776. All the founders loved his free market, free enterprise, pro-growth prosperity, because they wanted to get out from under the yoke of socialism. Right. That's what kings and queens were, socialism. Now, here's one. The rotunda, the capital rotunda, 
I am told they want to take down some Confederate statues and then put up a statue of Thurgood Marshall. I am totally fine. I've said this. Thurgood Marshall is a great American. He was, as the head of the NAACP legal division in the 40s and 50s, did wonderful, wonderful things. Absolutely. And as a member of the Supreme Court, as a just did wonderful, wonderful things, okay? Let's put his statue up. Why do we have to rip history down? Why can't we build up some of the great folks that perhaps didn't get the credit they should get? But let's not destroy America's traditions and history in the process. So why was it okay for Lincoln to go out of his way to say, we're not going to get revenge, we're going to come back together uh -huh. as a country, right. and it's not, time, it's not time to point fingers. We've got to come back together, and it's about healing. Or else we would have had a situation where there was a sniper war, for the, for the, a guerrilla war, for the next hundred years. Instead, our country laid down its arms, we got back together, and formed the world's number one superpower, the beacon of democracy around the world. That's part of the story. Don't take it out because you decided 150 years later it's not worthy of your time or your remembrance. Those are families. Those are the legacies that came back. Go back to those times. The arrogance of this age and this generation, uh, I think, goes beyond description. I like what you said in the break. Add, don't subtract. Describe what happened and show what we learned from That's it. That's exactly right. Look, Lincoln's second inaugural dress, perhaps the greatest inaugural dress ever. I was there at the time, 1865, with um, charity towards... No, with malice toward none and charity toward all. That's different than ripping down America. Right. Maybe some of our friends on the left could give that a half a second thought. Brian Kilmeade, thank you very much. I'm going to be with you tomorrow morning. Uh, Fox and Friends, my favorite. I will, in fact, get up early and set the alarm early. For a very good reason. You have a special coming up, and we're going to get a chance to talk to that on the other channel. And also, you know what? The Yankees are so bad, I can't watch their games anymore. <laughs> They're not doing well. <laughs> Brian Kilmeade.